Hi, my name is Quobix, and I'm the founder of Princess Beef Heavy Industries. Princess Beef Heavy Industries. This video is a walkthrough of how you can check the compliance of an open API specification against a client, like a UI, a CLI, or an SDK, and a server or an actual API endpoint. We're going to use an application called Wiretap. What is Wiretap? Wiretap is an API compliance testing tool that allows us to tap into requests and responses between clients and servers and validate that those requests and responses comply with the open API specification defined. Wiretap can also replace a local dev server like Webpack's dev server, which can also host a UI and proxy all the API calls to an endpoint. So how does it work? If a request comes into Wiretap for a local file like index.html, the static file will be served by Wiretap instead of the request being validated and sent to an API endpoint. For actual API calls, Wiretap will first validate the request and send both the request made and the results of the compliance validation up to the Monitor UI in real time. Once validated, the request passes through any path rewriting that needs to occur. Rewriting is important in cases where we have complex networks of API endpoints and local endpoints that don't match up, or we have APIs with different paths that are being redirected to multiple servers. After any rewriting happens, the request is sent to an actual API endpoint, dropping or adding any headers as configured. Once the response comes back from the actual API endpoint, Wiretap validates it. Then it sends both the response and the validation results to the Monitor UI, and then returns the response to the client that's waiting for it. Let's go ahead and install Wiretap before we do anything else. Using Homebrew is the most accessible if you're on a Mac or Linux. Or there's npm slash yarn if you're a JavaScript fan. Docker is available too for those who like containers. And if none of those are to your taste, you can install Wiretap using curl. Let's first run Wiretap without any options. It will complain and tell us that we need to define a URL to forward requests to. We're going to use a toy gift shop API just so we can test things out. Now that we have Wiretap running locally, let's pull down an example open API specification that we can use as a source of truth for our API. Just for fun, Let's check the OpenAPI specification against Vacuum to see how it holds up in terms of API quality. Oh, look at that. A perfect score. Shocking. The OpenAPI specification represents a tiny but a full working toy API that I've named the Princess Beef Gift Shop. Let's fire up Wiretap using the dash S flag to define the Gift Shop OpenAPI spec that we just downloaded and then use the dash U flag to tell Wiretap to redirect all the traffic to this URL. All of our gift shop API endpoints exist at slash Wiretap slash gift shop. Wiretap has booted up and now we can simply start making requests and see how they comply with the spec. Let's open up the monitor UI on port 9091. Now let's first get a list of products available so we're going to send a curl request to this URL. I will pipe the results through JQ, just so it's easier to read what the API returns. We must call localhost over HTTP on port 9090. That's the default Wiretap port. You can also configure it. The results come back nicely in the terminal, and the request and the response are available on the Wiretap monitor UI. Clicking on the transaction will load it into view. There are no violations with this request. Clicking on the Request tab allows us to see the sent headers. And then clicking on the Response tab shows us things like the response headers, the response code, the response body, and any cookies that were returned as well with the response. Now let's go ahead and make an invalid request to the Gift Shop API and try and create a new product. We get back an error 400, telling us that the request is invalid and explaining that the JSON we supplied is no good. This invalid response is that the result that we would expect because we've violated the contract without even knowing it. Let's go and take a look at the Wiretap monitor 
and click on the HTTP transaction with a violation icon. We can see the Lit Up Violations tab is telling us that the transaction has actually violated the contract. We have a request violation that says no media type of form URL encoded is defined as part of the request body specification for this operation. But don't worry, there is help available. The how to fix this violation section tells us that we have to use one of the supported types defined in the contract. In this case, it's application slash JSON. Let's try that request again, but this time let's set the content type header to application slash JSON. We have still violated the OpenAPI contract, but this time for a different reason. If we click on the transaction in Wiretap, we can see that the request violations have changed and a different one appears. This time, it's a failure to validate the schema. The error shows us that we're missing a required property. Actually, we're missing a number of them. If we click on the Show Validation Schema and Object button, we can see the schema has failed to be validated and we can see which line of the schema is throwing the violation. In this case, line two tells us that a required property is missing and the reason states which are missing. Hitting the validated object will switch the view to the object passed in for the request that failed the validation. We also have this line and column number. Clicking it will open up the API contract and jump to that line in the specification that shows us where the violation occurred in the spec. Filtering. When our clients start sending in many requests, we can filter them by HTTP method or by keyword by using the filters icon at the top of the application, then selecting the method to filter by or by typing in keywords. For example, let's type in a product ID of PB0001 to the filters and then notice that all of our transactions have suddenly dropped. Wiretap only shows HTTP transactions that contain PB0001 in the path, parameters, request, or response body. To remove a filter, click the little X next to its name. Request chaining. A request chain is a series of API calls that use the same parameter name grouped by the value of that parameter. For example, the gift shop contains an API endpoint for searching products named slash wiretap slash gift shop slash search. It accepts a query parameter of query, original, I know, and the value is the keyword to search products for. So let's add query to our request chains and close the filters drawer. If we run a curl command to search for merge types like shirt, cup, or hat, we can see them in the wiretap monitor. If we do that a few times for each search, a new chain icon appears on the monitor next to transactions. Clicking the transaction will show a new tab named chain, which when we click will show all the HTTP requests that use query as a parameter and the same query value as each other. We can see how long the chain has taken to complete to the current moment and the time between each request. This feature is useful when tracking a parameter over multiple requests. Let's slow things down a bit. If we open the controls panel by clicking on the settings icon in the top right hand corner of the application, we can see a global API delay option that allows us to set a return delay for all API requests. The delay happens once the responses come back from the API endpoint. Wiretap will hold on to the API response for the amount of time specified in milliseconds by the global API delay. When set, the delay shows up in the HTTP transaction as a little hourglass that showcases the artificial delay in the response added by Wiretap. Export the report. If you want to extract all the data captured by Wiretap, all the requests and responses, the violations to use in some other application or in something else in some kind of downstream report, there's an option in the setting panel to download session data. That will pack up everything into a lovely JSON file that is ready to be passed and used however you want. And that's it for this video. However, Wiretap has much, much more functionality to offer. So why don't you go and visit the site, download it, check it out and see what else you can do. Until next time. Twitter tweet.
Yes.